Today we are going to discuss the vibrations of rings and arches. Uh, in the previous uh, lecture, we initiated some discussions on the dynamics of uh, curved beams and we had discussed about beams with uh, constant curvature, uh, which are in a plane. Uh, so, before we look into the vibrations of, uh, of rings and arches, let us uh, recapitulate briefly what we discussed in the previous lecture. So, we considered So, curved beams are uh, found in various uh, civil structures like bridges. They, uh, they are used in arches so, uh, and various other places. Now, uh, we uh, looked at the dynamics in uh, in the previous lecture on on, dyna on the in the uh, dynamics of curved beams, and we observed that uh, the in important uh, aspect of the dynamics is that the axial and the transverse. are coupled. So, they are coupled because of this uh, uh, curvature of the uh, of the structure of the beam. So, uh, we had made some simplifying uh, assumptions when we discussed about the when we formulated the dynamics. Uh, we assumed that the beam is still planar uh, though it is curved in a plane. We uh, considered that uh, we assumed that the deflection is uh, much smaller than the thickness of the beam and the thickness in turn is smaller uh, much smaller than the uh, curvature which is assumed to which was assumed to be a constant. And we also assume that the Euler Bernoulli hypothesis holds which means that uh, a cross section of the, the beam uh, which was initially perpendicular to the neutral fiber remains uh, perpendicular to the neutral fiber remains flat and perpendicular to the neutral fiber even after deflection. So, we neglected shear which means that we considered that uh, the, the beam is uh, infinitely stiff in shear. So, uh, with such considerations uh, in the previous lecture we have derived the equation of motion using the variational formulation. So, uh, we considered the Lagrangian which we wrote as the kinetic energy minus the potential energy and the kinetic energy was one half of uh, rho A Here, uh, these are the field variables. So, u so this is the field variable for the axial or circumferential uh, uh, motion uh, deflection, and this is the transverse. W is for the transverse deflection. So, 
this and minus the potential energy we calculated as So, here the, the angle varies uh, from say 0 to whatever angle you have. So, the angular extent of the beam. <coughs> now, uh, in the uh, pre previous lecture, we also made uh, a simplification based on uh, a certain redefinitions. So, let us consider some non dimensionalization so the time is non dimensionalized so t tilde is the non dimensional time u is non dimensionalized using the radius of curvature of the beam. Similarly, w was non dimensionalized now using uh, this non dimensionalization we can re uh, write this Lagrangian So, this is our uh, Lagrangian here S r we had defined as the slenderness ratio which So, this is the slenderness ratio uh, which uh, tells us how slender the beam is. So, higher the value the more slender it is. So, it is the radius of curvature divided by the radius of gyration of the cross section about the uh, neutral uh, axis. Now, so with this uh, Lagrangian we uh, derived the equation of motion. So, this was the equation corresponding to u the circumferential motion and 
corresponding to the transverse motion. we have these two equations. So, today we are going to first discuss the vibrations of rings. So, in the case of so the equation the, the two equations of motion uh, so, this is the for the circumferential motion and this is the radial or the transverse motion. So, we imagine that we have a We have a uniform ring so this is the radial uh, direction and this is the circumferential tangential direction. This is the angle theta. Now, <coughs> the boundary conditions, we discuss the boundary conditions for a complete ring like this. So, it turns out to be uh, periodicity conditions. on the field variables. So, we have the periodicity conditions on the field variables. Now, we are going to perform the modal analysis of this uh, system. So, we search for solutions with the structure So, we are interested in solutions with this uh, separable structure. Now, you see that this is a function of theta and t. Now, it must be periodic in, in theta. So, we must have solutions of the form. like this. So, where n can take values 0, 1, 2, etcetera. So, so this is to enforce the, the periodicity conditions to, to satisfy the periodicity conditions uh, that we have written here. <coughs> 
So, we, we search for solutions of this form. Now, here, so if n is 0, then uh, as you can see that it becomes independent of theta, which means then we are talking about axisymmetric modes. So, modes which are independent of theta. For uh, non zero values of n, we have uh, non axisymmetric modes. So, let us see what happens when we consider a solution like this. So, we substitute the solution in the, uh, in the equations of motion. So, so if you do that, then uh, it can check that upon simplification of these uh, equations. So, this is the first equation, the second equation reads So, these are the two equations that we obtain by substituting the solution form, uh, modal solution form in the equations of motion. Now, for non trivial uh, solutions of u and w, this capital U and capital W, uh, we must have the <coughs> determinant of this matrix. So, we can write this as a matrix. So, determinant of m must vanish. So, for non trivial solutions of u and w, and that leads us to the characteristic equation, which can be obtained easily. So, this is our characteristic equation. <coughs> now, we have to solve for omega from this equation, substitute in these two equations and then solve for uh, these eigenvectors u and w and then uh, we will obtain the eigen functions. <coughs> 
So, you see the eigenfunctions uh, will be complex like this. So, u and w themselves will be uh, can be complex because you have this i here in these equations. So, u and w are themselves complex and hence these eigenfunctions are all complex. Now, uh, we have discussed already that when you have uh, complex eigenfunctions, uh, we uh, both the real and the, the imaginary parts of this can be the eigenfunctions. And so, what we can conclude is that uh, for, a, for a given eigen frequency, we can have uh, more than one eigenfunction. This is called degeneracy. So, we have So, uh, we have uh, multiple eigen uh, functions for a given uh, eigen frequency. Now, uh, let us uh, see then uh, solve. Uh, these uh, this equation characteristic equation and try to find out the eigen frequencies and the eigen functions which will characterize the mode of vibration. So, we start with the value n equal to 0. So, let us consider axisymmetric So, n is equal to 0. So, if n is equal to 0, then uh, you can see straight from here so from here so n being 0. So, this is the characteristic equation for axisymmetric modes. So, that would imply so you have uh, omega equal to 0 and omega equal to plus or minus uh, 1. So, let us first look at omega equal to 0. So, the eigen uh, vector corresponding to omega equal to 0 turns out to be if you solve uh, the, the, the matrix equation then uh, uh, u and w uh, turn out to be 1 and 0. Now, this means that see the, the solution was so n is 0 omega is also 0. So, this term is absent and so the, the, the motion is this is 1 and this is 0. So, which means there is it is a motion along the circumferential direction of the ring. With 0 frequency so, this is nothing but a rigid body mode. So, this is a rigid body mode which implies that angular momentum is conserved. 
this is not a, a vibratory mode. So, ne next let us look at uh, the other solution which is omega equal to plus or minus 1. So, in this case if you solve the Eigen vector that turns out to be zero and one. So now there is no motion in the circumferential direction, the motion is So, here n is equal to 0, but omega is plus or minus 1, which means it is an oscillatory mode. So, it will be an oscillatory mode. which is only in the radial direction. So, you have something uh, known as a breathing mode, this is sometimes known as a breathing mode. So, the ring uh, expands and contracts axisymmetrically. So, this is uh, a breathing mode. 